day 60. In a rare statement yesterday, the IDF expressed regret for killing a Lebanese soldier while carrying out a strike. Israeli forces were working to neutralise a tangible threat that was identified at a Hezbollah launch and observation post along the border. The statement said the IDF received a report that a number of soldiers in Lebanon's army were injured during the attack. Lebanon army forces were not the target of the attack. The IDF is sorry for the incident and it will be investigated. No such apologies have come with regards to the ongoing ground offensive in Gaza. The IDF continues to operate within the rules of war, minimising injury or damage to non-involved parties. Defence Minister Yoav Gallant said in last night's press conference that he told the IDF and the coordinator of activities in the territories to close off the electricity, the water and the fuel that Israel supplies to Gaza and halt the entrance of workers on October 7th. He was moving, he said, towards severing all Israeli government responsibility for Gaza. When the ground operations began, Gallant said he knew that the pressure was the path to bring home the hostages. The ground operation requires and enables humanitarian aid, minimal humanitarian aid, in order to enable the military pressure. Regarding letting fuel into Gaza, as Israel is doing, Gallant says that in return, Israel has the right to demand that Hamas honour its obligations to allow the Red Cross to visit the hostages or at least convey medicines and other requirements. UN spokesman Stefan Dujaric says that limited humanitarian aid is being delivered to the Rafah region in southern Gaza because of intense hostilities. Dujaric said that all telecom services have shut down due to cuts in the main fibre routes and only 100 aid trucks with humanitarian supplies and 69,000 litres of fuel entered Gaza from Egypt on Monday about the same amount as Sunday, well below the average of 170 trucks and 110,000 litres of fuel that entered Gaza during the humanitarian pause from November 24th to 30th. Dujaric quoted Lynn Hastings, the UN humanitarian coordinator in the Palestinian territories, saying shelters have no capacity, the health system is on its knees and there's lack of clean drinking water, no proper sanitation and poor nutrition. Israel responded that the conditions required to deliver aid to the people of Gaza exist. We have completed all the necessary logistics to make it happen. Now the UN has to keep up. Foreign Minister Eli Cohen said yesterday that he has not renewed the visa for Lynn Hastings, the UN's humanitarian coordinator in the Palestinian territories, over her refusal to speak out against Hamas. Cohen has given Hastings, who's based in East Jerusalem, two weeks to leave the country. He wrote, whoever does not condemn Hamas over the massacre of 1,200 Israelis, kidnapping of old people and babies, horrific torture and rape, and the use of Gaza as human shields, but does condemn Israel a democratic country that defends its citizens cannot serve the UN and will not enter Israel. This is Peter Jones-Pellach reporting for NCJWA Australia.